What do the Chinese know and what do they do that we don't seem to know and that we don't do? Well, they work hard. They save their money. They save and invest over 35 percent of their income. We save 2 percent of our and invest 2 percent of our income. No, I mean, they're trying to all get ahead. If you put money in a Chinese bank in China, do you get a, 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 an approachable, a material return on it? Or do you get the type of interest rate that you get here, which is like 1% or less? You get a, a higher rates of interest in China, they're much higher than you get here. Uh, plus, of course, the appreciation of the currency. The currency is going up. Our currency is being debased. They're trying to destroy the value of our currency. All right. Um, I wanna, they being Washington. Of course, of course. I, I want to put to you the question that I just put to Charlie Gasparino and Steve Moore. The president says, we're experiencing a recovery. What the heck kind of recovery is this? Judge, if you're getting the money that they're throwing out the window from Washington, right. of Meaning course you're bank better or off. On one of the companies that they're stimulating. Yes, you're better off, of course, but the rest of us are worse off. The debt is going straight through the roof. The nation is getting into trouble. The next time we have a slowdown, what are we going to do? We've shot our bullets. What will happen if the Republicans stick to their guns and do not allow the president, uh, do, not, uh, do not vote to raise the debt ceiling. Bear in mind that earlier today, Speaker Boehner, the leader of the Republicans in the House, said we have to let the president borrow more. Bear in mind that there's a strong contingent of Republicans in the House that believe now is the time to draw the line in the sand. What happens if they do draw that line? If they draw the line, right. the economy is going to slow down, but the government will stop spending. We're going to take some pain, but let's get the pain over with now, because if we wait a year or two years or five years, the pain's going to be unbearable. We're not going to be able to take the pain. Here, here's my argument. My argument is, tell me what you think of this. If we just keep raising the debt ceiling and borrowing and borrowing and borrowing with no moral or financial intention or wherewithal to pay it back, at some point there will be a crisis because we will be paying too high taxes, too much in, in debt service, and something very bad will happen. Mm -hmm. and, and basically, when they want to raise the debt ceiling next week, they're just delaying the inevitable. Well, you're exactly right. That's what I said. It's going to be unbearable pain if we have to wait five years before the market suddenly says to us no more we're not going to lend you any more money interest rates will go through the roof the value of the dollar will collapse you talk about pain you talk about suffering wait till that happens in five years or three right. years you, you and i were raised believing that uh, china was a communist country and that the rulers were dictators and in large measure they are however is free market economics taught in chinese schools George, let me tell you, the Chinese call themselves communists, but they're not communists. They're the best capitalists, in, among the best capitalists in the world, right? California is more, more communist than China right now. Whoa! Uh, well, Massachusetts is more communist than China. Right, give me, an, give me? me an example of the flourishing of you the free to... market in China and mention the government, because my fear is not that people won't have the energy, it's that the government will stifle them. Well, wait, wait a minute. First of all, the government changes every five years in China. It's not, it's not a dictator. You call it a dictatorship. What kind of dictatorship is it where the government changes every five years and you guys come in to run it. Mao Zedong is dead. Right. Mao Zedong is not coming back anymore. Joseph Stalin is not coming back anymore. Those days are finished. Nobody wants to be a communist it, is it Is it easier to start up a, con a company in, in the literal startup sense where you, you get seed money and you make a small investment and some people loan money to you and you sell them your, ide your ideas in China? than in the United States today? Well, the venture capital business is booming in China. Yes, Western venture capitalists and Asian venture capitalists are flocking there, keep investing with people, young people, old people, to start businesses. Whether it's easier or not, I don't know, because I haven't done it in, in the US or in China recently, but I know that lots and lots of people are doing it. And there are huge numbers of people making vast fortunes in China who started off as rag dealers. When, you know? the, when the president and the treasury secretary and those who, who agree with them complain about trade deficits, do they know what they're talking about? Example, if I can buy a widget or a, a million widgets from a manufacturer in China, the quality is as good or better than here and the cost is a lot less. What's wrong with that? I agree. Wouldn't you want to buy, buy something that's cheaper and just as good? Of course. And by the way, China has ch trade deficits with other countries. You know, the Germans, for instance, have a trade surplus with, with China. So it's, some people are able to go into China and sell things and make money and still do better than we do. And why does the American government have a problem with that? <laughs> Please, Judge, you're bad for my nervous system. <laughs> you know, they don't know what they're doing. They don't have a clue what's going on. They're all sitting around trying to buy each other's votes, pay off their friends, pay off their friends, and, and win another election. They're not trying to do what's good for the country. Right, what, what do you think that the Treasury Secretary uh, is negotiating, even as we speak, Tim Geithner, uh, with his counterparts uh, from China, who's visiting him in Washington this week? What, what, what does he want 
from the Chinese financial community. Well, what he says he wants is for the value of the U.S. dollar to go down and the value of the Chinese currency. He's doing to go a pretty up. good job of reducing the value of the American dollar by himself here. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. He doesn't have to do it exactly right. We do, he could do it all by himself. No, but he's trying to get the, the Chinese to agree to let the value of the dollar go down, the Chinese currency goes up. He thinks that that will solve our trade deficit. Judge, throughout history, people have tried to debase the currency to try to get the economy going. Right. It has never worked in the long run. It has never worked in the medium term. But, but the mindset of Tim Geithner and Barack Obama and Ben Bernanke, the chair of the Federal Reserve, is that they don't debase the, uh, the currency. You and I believe they do. Basic economics teaches that they do. What will it take to get through their skulls that when they print cash, they don't make people richer, except the people to whom they initially give that cash? When they resign. <laughs> when they get thrown out of office, then they'll understand. Then they'll understand what's going on. It has never worked what they're doing. But, you know, Mr. Geithner has never been right. Please, look at his records in the 17 years he's been in Washington. And Mr. Bernanke, oh, my goodness, he has never been right about it. You should, you should get somebody to research it at Fox. Just go down and see what he said every month. Right. If I were wrong every month for, for eight years, you wouldn't have me back on the show. He's been wrong every month for eight years. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Last uh, question before I, um, before I let you go. Do, do the negotiators in Washington, uh, Joe Biden, John Boehner, Republicans, Democrats in the Congress and the executive branch, have an eye on China? In other words, are they about the national debt? Are they concerned that China might think that we might not be able to pay them back? Of course, Judge. The Chinese have said, wait a minute, guys, you keep running up huge debts. What are you going to do? Would you keep lending money every month to somebody who just keeps building more and more and more debt? If you had a brother-in-law like that, wouldn't you say, listen, Brother-in-law, I'm not going to lend you any more money. You've got to go and take care of yourself. Well, yeah. that's what the Chinese are starting. But a lot of people, a yeah. lot of people are. You know what's so good about you, Rogers? You make these things sound so easy and understandable and compelling. I hope the government is watching. Jim Rogers, it's a pleasure. Have a great Thank trip you. back to the Far East.